We are recording. Great. Well, um, I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, this evening's webinar. Um, and I want to especially thank our alumni advisory board, most notably Natalia Zuriaga, who is going to be leading tonight's session. Um, this is a really exciting session where we're going to be talking a little bit about um, experiences with coding um, as undergraduates and what the potential future for that holds. And so I hope everyone has an opportunity to really take in um, today's session and make sure uh, um, you know, they ask all the questions they have and, and, and you really have an opportunity to pick the brains of uh, some amazing uh, university students who are still affiliated with the Congressional Op Challenge program um, and have these real world experiences. Um, I should quickly mention, um, I know Natalia mentioned, I'm the director of the Congressional App Challenge, uh, and I'm proud to say um, that we have opened the 2022 Congressional App Challenge for pre-registration. And so um, if you are going away to college in the fall, or if you're already there, um, well, then good luck to you. Um, stay in touch with us. Uh, but if you are still going to be enrolled in Miller High School, this fall, uh, you can go to our website and you can pre-register for next year's competition. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and hand this over to Natalia. Uh, Natalia, take it away. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. And thank you for everyone who's joining us today. Um, okay, so I guess just for, um, so just just as, uh, so we can kind of evaluate who's out here in the crowd. So uh, can you guys comment um, which one of you has uh, participated in the, in our previous cycle of the Congressional App Challenge? So the 20 year, 20, 2021 um, challenge we just had. Now feel free to comment in chat just so I can get a good understanding. And then for those of you that are alumni or are in college, feel free to uh, comment on that on chat as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I guess the goal with this panel is that, um, so once we're done like completing the Congressional App Challenge, like what are kind of like our next steps? How can we uh, create even more complex projects, even more projects that we can like um, serve our community and practice our technical skills so that we can uh, actually start pursuing the path of like what it's like to be a software engineer or pursue a career in computer science. So the goal of this panel is to kind of understand how we how can we maximize our college experience so that uh, we'll be kind of ready for a, a career in tech. So here we have three panelists, some who are formal congressional app challengers like you, who will be sharing their experiences building websites, mobile apps, and other interesting technologies during their college careers. And from there, uh, you guys can uh, feel free to ask any questions you have, and we'll be uh, they'll be here to kind of give their insight on um, uh, on those. Okay, awesome. So we will move on with introducing our panelists. Okay, so here we have Brees, um, who is the head of the Ambassadors Program in the Congressional App Challenge Alumni Advisory Board. Uh, Reese, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Reese. I am from Elkett City, Maryland. I go to school here at UMBC. And throughout college, I have been involved in the Student Government Association. And I put like a few names of a few apps that I developed through my tenure as a senator, working on some initiatives for the Student Government Association for like improving the student body's quality of life throughout like their college experience. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Reese. Next, we have Aditya. Hello, um, I'm a third year uh, computer science major um, at UCLA. Um, you can kind of pretty much see everything that I've worked on uh, on the slide. Um, just real quick, uh, I'm at UCLA. Um, I have jumped around between a lot of different clubs um, and I've uh, spent a lot of time uh, working on uh, my own student startup that I founded with a set of friends of mine. I'm also interested in uh, Tech for Social Good, um, which, uh, which is the club called Nova that you see on the slide. Um, we've created a lot of cool apps and websites at that club. Uh, I'm also interested in uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so I've actually tutored a whole bunch of students here at UCLA um, in AI and ML. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Aditya. And finally, we have Isabella joining us. Hi, everyone. I'm Isabella. Um, sorry, I apologize about the slide, but I'm a first year computer science and economics major at Dartmouth. Um, and I formerly competed in the Congressional App Challenge, and now I'm serving on the board as head of partnerships. Um, so I have background in web dev, so HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Python, um, 
iOS stuff and Swift and Xcode, and I'm currently working on a Unity project. Um, at Dartmouth, I'm part of an organization called the Dolly Lab, um, which is the digital applied learning um, experience lab, I think it stands for. Um, so it's kind of cool. Basically, we get paid to make apps that either help the campus community or um, or we work with outside contracts. So right now I'm working on this project with a museum in Florida and we're building an exhibit for them. Um, I'm also in women in business and women in computer science. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Isabella. And those are our panelists for today. So I will kick it off with some questions that I have in store. And then from there, we can open it up to a Q&A where you guys can ask your questions. Okay, so my first question is, what got you guys interested in app development in the first place? Like, did you discover it in high school or was it like in college where you had your first taste of computer science? And what made you decided to pursue that a lot more seriously? So we can start off with Reese. Yeah, I think apps, I think are just the way that most people interact with their phones. Like, obviously people go on the websites and stuff like that, but typically you're not visiting a website every day. If you're older, sometimes people might type in Gmail to their address bar every single day, but most people use apps and that's like a, a great contact point that you're able to kind of interact with people and change their lives and the, for the better. So I like to do web apps because I think that the friction of having to install an app and just to have another app on your phone can sometimes be a hard leap, especially when you're trying to start out an app. So I try to do web development to make it very easily shareable and also so that people can come back to it on all kinds of different devices. Okay, awesome. Uh, Aditya, do you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I didn't really um, do a lot of computer science per se when I was in high school. Um, I'm actually an international student from Dubai, so I didn't really learn a lot of CS. Um, I kind of played around a little bit with, you know, all sorts of different programming languages in high school, but never really like stuck to something. Uh, that did change when I came to the US and entered UCLA in freshman year. Um, I signed up for my first hackathon. And usually when you're at a hackathon, you kind of need to get like a really cool like app, website, whatever you want to make in a really short amount of time. And at that point, I didn't really know anything. So I was just like, you know what? I'll just see what I can do with like an app, like a just a normal mobile app. Um, that's kind of when I started like uh, exploring iOS apps um, and particularly the Swift programming language, which is what you use to uh, program iOS apps in. And I kind of took it off from there, um, played around uh, with different mobile, um, like pro pro programming languages for mobile apps. Um, and, you know, it just kind of took off from there. Uh, I, the reason I think uh, I really got super interested in mobile apps was just that um, I think it gives you there's a lot of flexibility with mobile apps. You can do a lot of different things. Um, and it's oftentimes the primary way you interact with things on a, on a daily basis. Um, uh, I didn't take too much of interest in web apps. Uh, I guess that's where I'm different from Reese, but um, I definitely like um, honed in on all sorts of different mobile apps you know, utilizing all the different tools you can uh, use that are available for uh, mobile mobile app programmers out there. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a learning process. You start off small and you kind of see where it takes you and uh, eventually you land somewhere, uh, you land at something that you really enjoy doing and you kind of just go with it, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. I definitely relate because I'm also a fellow mobile app developer. Um, just for some context for um, the attendees here, can you just describe what a hackathon is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really should have done that actually. So a hackathon is uh, basically, um, uh, I guess I, I would call it like a tech event uh, where a whole bunch of students, um, they're usually college students, but I've also seen a lot of high school students at hackathons uh, who usually like, you know, um, well, back in when I did, back in like 2019 we all used to come in person but now it's like all online but um basically a whole bunch of people would come to uh, a particular place and event uh, meet up with a lot of different people from you know different uh colleges different high schools team up with them and create like 
pretty much anything that they want to create. So this can be like websites, mobile apps, anything that you can like, anything that you believe can make a change in the world and also something that you can kind of show off to other people. Um, that's what you usually do at a hackathon. And a hackathon is usually like a, a 24 hour to a 48 hour event. Um, and since it's such a big time crunch, you kind of just have to like keep coding, coding, coding and try to get something really good out in like a very short time span. So it's like, it's kind of high pressure, but then you get used to it and then you like interact with a lot of other people and it's, it's a very fun experience overall. So um, highly recommend it for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I also used to participate in hackathons. Oh, recent, Isabel, did you guys participate in hackathons too? Or Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, we can move on to Isabella. Yes, um, so I got my start with computer science pretty early on in high school when I heard about this program called Code with Classy, um, which is a free summer coding um, program for beginners. Um, it's geared toward um, young girls and non-binary people. So if you fit those who are in middle school or high school. So if you fit those criteria um, and you're in attendance, I strongly encourage applying um, because actually it was my final project in that two week camp um, that I ended up submitting to the congressional app challenge um, and winning for my district. So yeah, I'd encourage applying. Um, and that camp was web dev. So I got my first little foray into that side of things. And I came back the next summer to do mobile dev. Um, and I liked both equally. I'm not gonna take as strong a stance as my fellow panelists here have. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of kept going, worked on some personal projects while I was still in high school and now I've been getting more involved with projects here at Dartmouth. But I know a lot of my friends um, haven't really started working on, pro on projects on their own or going to hackathons or anything since arriving in college. So there's definitely no rush um, to get involved in high school. There's always room to learn. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, I kind of remember, I'm, I'm actually like a third year in UCLA as well. And I kind of remember like my journey of starting out computer science and app development as like very rough just because like it's so overwhelming with the amount of technologies and the amount of information you have to learn and apply. But um, yeah, but now that I'm here, uh, we, we can definitely tell you guys like uh, our experiences uh, kind of battling that challenge. Okay, awesome. All right, so I guess we can start off with like, uh, what is one, um, what is one coding project that you're like very proud of that you made in college, and what was your journey building that? So we can start off with Reese. We'll go in this order. Yeah, I think that the one I'm most proud of was actually one of my first ones I made as part of the Student Government Association. It's a tool I call Salary Search. So since I go to a public university in Maryland all the salaries of faculty are public. So I just found, um, because they're technically government employees so that all the information is all public and transparent, but it was kind of like, it was like an Excel, it was like an Excel file. So people didn't really know how to find it. People didn't know how to look for it. It was a big, it was a big file. So I downloaded it from the Baltimore Sun because they had maintained the database over the years of it. I got some historical data. I cut it down to just UMBC employees. And then I made like a search bar to show so like you could just type in your professor's name and see how much they make because I think it's very important for students to kind of know how much their professors are being paid, especially if they're not very good ones. And I think it just opens up a lot of conversation about compensation in universities. And also you can see how much, how like poorly adjuncts are paid. And there's just a lot of things that I tried to have take most of my, my approach to app development in college was to find a data source that was kind of hidden away or just harder to access and then to make it very easy to access to empower students to kind of use it in their own kind of way. So in that way, I'm most proud of it because I think there was a lot of potential for other students to use it as well. Oh, wow, for sure. That's actually a great idea. Um, honestly, I didn't really understand like how app development could be applied in like student government like that. So that's like a really, really cool application. Very okay, awesome. Aditya, do you have some thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess it's really hard for me to pick out one specific like project that I'm super proud of. So I'll say two instead. Um, so uh, I think the first one I want to talk about is the actually the first ever app that I ever made. And I and in retrospect, when I look back at it, it's not a super like cool or great app. 
uh, but it was my first and that's kind of why I think I'm super proud of it. So uh, uh, this app pretty much was born out of like the hectic spree of uh, a 24 hour hackathon uh, at UCLA. Um, uh, basically the premise of the app was uh, and uh, environmentally focused. Um, the basic gist of it was um, uh, the app is simple. You take, you snap a picture of any particular item, like a tracked item, um, like some an item you're like done with. Um, and what it does, what the app would do is it would uh, run like a machine learning algorithm on the picture and kind of figure out what sort of track it is. So it will classify like uh, whether that track item would go in like recycling or landfill or uh, what other like um, classes of um, different track items are out there. Um, and that was like one of the first apps. It's very simple. It's just like snap a picture and it tells you like, oh, throw this, throw this item in, you know, this trash or like recycling or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was my first ever one that I made. Um, I don't think that many people used it, but some people did, I'm assuming. So I was super proud of that. Um, I guess this is the second one that I'm really, really proud of. And um, this is very much, uh, very much different. Uh, from the hackathon experience because this product, this app that I worked on, I've worked on for almost uh, one and a half years now, uh, and with also with a group of like other college students at UCLA. Um, uh, the the app is called Hustle. Uh, it's actually a, a student startup that I'm a part of, and uh, the basic premise of the app is it provides a platform for college students uh, to kind of monetize their skills, use any skills that they have, um, stuff like you know. Um, hair cutting, doing nails, uh, tutoring, anything that you would want to do as a college student, uh, there's a place on the app for that, and you can monetize that skill by offering it to other college students. Uh, so it's a, it's a very, it's a much more complex app, which is also why I'm super proud of it. Um, but again, it, it really shows how much you can grow from the first app you make to like the latest thing you worked on, because uh, the amount of things I've learned over that two years Two year time span from my first app in freshman year to the app I'm working on right now um, in in my third year, uh, it shows how much you can learn in such a short, short time frame, which is why I think app development is cool in general. Um, but yeah, those are the two projects that I'm super proud of. Yeah, for sure. That's actually pretty interesting because the first project you built in a hackathon, so it was a very like short term type thing, like 24 hours, right? And then this project yeah. is like two years long, which is like. I don't know, like quadruple, not even quadruple, more than quadruple at the time. A long, yeah, a long so, time, pretty much. Mm -hmm, awesome. Yeah, so it's kind of cool to see like how you have like the short-term projects and those long-term projects where you dedicate like a lot of time to them. Awesome. And then uh, Isabella, any projects that you're proud of? Yeah, um, it's also hard for me to pick just one because they're like my children and I'm proud of um, all of the projects I've worked on. But I guess with recency bias, um, I'll pick the latest project I've been working on, um, which is sort of digitizing all of the functions of our physical ID cards. So right now to get into buildings, pay for meals, pick up packages, basically anything on campus, you need to scan um, your physical ID card. But I'm working on an app with a team that will just make that into an app so you can um, get into buildings and do all of those functions either with Apple Wallet or through the app itself. And that's been really rewarding because it's sort of a safety issue on our campus. I know a lot of people who have lost their ID cards and you can't replace them on weekends because they've been locked out of their dorm. And it's been really rewarding figuring out a solution that will make access easier and more convenient for everyone. No, for sure. That's super cool. I feel like UCLA could use that. <laughs> Um, I guess like, wait, so is this app like currently in development or have you like launched it already for like the public body to use or? Yeah, it's it's currently in development in the sort of early stages now. I'm part of this Got it. Um, oh. entrepreneurship program run through Tuck, the Dartmouth Business School. Um, and we have to basically come up with an idea, develop a prototype and pitch it in a Shark Tank oh, style okay. thing. Um, so Hopefully in the next few weeks, um, we'll have like a working prototype of that. Okay, awesome, perfect, perfect. Um, let's see, okay, so we did have one question that um, someone in our Q&A, um, someone that uh, one of our attendees asks, 
So uh, also attendees, if you have like any questions that you wanna ask, uh, now's the time to feel free to submit that, but I will move on to those questions. So um, Elliot says, I'm applying to colleges next year. Do I need to major in computer science to get the most out of my app development? I can shoot for a little bit and then people can hop in, but I think it depends. Like, I don't think, like none of my app development skills were learned in the classroom. I think that I all, that I was either self-taught or like, I learned a theory in class, sure, that, that helped me apply to become more efficient in my coding, but like definitely I learned it on my own. So if you want to continue with it as a career, it's a lot easier to get into the industry with computer science degree because you're competing with other people who, are, who also have computer science degrees. But of course, there's no mate, like most companies will be happy to hire someone who at least can show strong skills regardless of major or degree. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, um, Aditya, but um, a lot of my coding skills are self-taught as well. And like Reese, I feel like my CS courses in college have really helped me with the more theoretical conceptual part and like really understanding why certain algorithms work and which ones are most efficient. Um, but I believe if you have a passion for coding and for developing apps, say, but you don't need to necessarily explore that, uh, that passion through the structure of a CS degree. It does help when applying for jobs and internships, but you can definitely still take a few coding classes or pursue projects on your own, even if you're studying. Like I know one of my friends is studying economics and art history and also codes in the Dolly Lab with me. So but it's really open to everyone. And I personally believe everyone should learn to code. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, yeah, reason is about did mention a lot of good points. Um, I definitely want to speak about this from like my perspective at UCLA. So the UCLA computer science curriculum is highly theoretical. Um, so you often learn a lot about um, algorithms, data structures, how things really work inside the computer. And a lot of that often doesn't, you don't really need that as a mobile app developer. Um, mo all my skills, I, yeah, I wanna say like pretty much all the skills I've learned um, in, for, for my app development has not come from any of my CS classes. So um, I would say like CS classes are super useful, but it's also very much dependent on um, what sort of like curriculum you're gonna be a part of at whichever college you choose to go to. Uh, there are some colleges that really, um, really like put a lot of uh, importance on the practical applications of what you're learning um, in your CS curriculum. And there are other colleges that would really um, have a lot more, have a lot, much larger preference for the theor theoretical side of CS. Um, so it does depend. You'll have to do a little research uh, to check out your college's CS curriculum. But I, I'm always been a believer, I've always been a believer of anyone can code um, if you're passionate enough about it. Um, because when I came from high school, I had almost no CS experience. And, and like now I'm like, you know, doing AI and developing like apps and stuff. So um, if, you have the, if you have the passion for coding and really getting a cool app and product out there, then there's nothing holding you back for sure. Yeah, no, for sure, I agree. Um, I guess like, Let's see if so if you do uh, come from a school that doesn't really have many like um, application. Oh, sorry, the, uh, that's more like theoretical focus and they don't have many like practical classes. I guess like um, how did you got how, for those of you that um, had the experience? How did you how were you guys able to, I guess, like teach uh, app development and like other technical skills yourself? Like, did you rely on online courses, maybe um, mentorship from uh, upperclassmen? So can you guys discuss your experiences on that? Yeah, um, so for me, it was very much learning by doing. Um, like, I, like I mentioned about like my first hackathon experience, when I entered the hackathon, I did not know anything about coding, uh, let alone how to even like create an app. Um, and I pretty much learned by just, you know, opening up whatever website you can find online, just kind of like trying to get a quick summary of whatever language you're trying to learn. 
um, and kind of see where that takes you. Um, I, um, I would say like the internet is a treasure trove of information and pretty much all of my practical skills I've learned uh, and not just in the app development sphere, but like in all, in pretty much everything I do, like a lot of that information does come just from internet, online videos, online courses, all that sort of stuff. That's kind of, that's, that's kind of what like sets the platform for you to start the learning process. Uh, and once you've like gotten the hang of things, um, you know, once you learn how to make the most basic of basic apps, that's when you kind of like start building on what you already know and start making more and more complex apps. Um, so yeah, I would say the internet is a wonderful resource. Um, and of course, another fantastic way to learn is uh, joining clubs uh, on campus because uh, when you do that, you're kind of taken away from that super academic sense of CS and you're now kind of pushed into this environment where you really have to use your skills um, to create something that the club can use or people outside the club can use. Um, so I would say, yeah, my experience uh, learning a lot of the technical technical skills I have has come from just um, learning by doing and uh, being a part of part of a lot of clubs on campus and getting as much experience as I could. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Reese and Isabella, do you guys have any other input? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree a lot with the learning by doing. I feel like that's how I've picked up my most useful skills, honestly just with the help of Google and Medium tutorials and a lot of Stack Overflow. Um, but I've also learned a lot through some workshops um, campus organizations have put together. Um, I mentioned that I'm a part of Dolly Lab, um, but before I applied and got in, I attended some workshops they hosted. There was one on database setup. Um, I also attended like a design one um, on how to use Figma. Um, so I think a lot of schools have similar workshops outside of regular class for you to learn skills like that. Like I know Stanford has their D lab that it does some stuff. I'm sure UCLA has one too. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of opportunities outside of class for you to learn. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much, guys. And then we have another attendee that asks, Specifically to Reese, um, how do you balance majoring in CS and philosophy? Did you also choose philosophy because it is an interest of yours that you want to explore or was it for another reason? And Isabel will also give her thoughts on this. Yeah, I think that I like the word balance because a lot of people automatically assume that when I double major in computer science and philosophy, I suddenly want to go into like technology ethics. And there certainly is a lot of overlap in like the philosophy of virtual reality, ethics of artificial intelligence and other things like that. But really, there are just like two of my interests that I really like, and I keep separate. Like that's that's fine. But I know that there is something. There's a rising movement called CS plus X. So it's when you double major in computer science and something else. So that could be like computer science and economics, computer science and art, and like there's a rising field of scholarship called digital humanities, where you're like primarily like a, like a humanist or like humanities person reading literature, or like medieval texts and something like that, or like and then applying computational methods to that. And that's certainly a field to go into, but of course, just keep your options open. Like you can learn, like Isabel said, you could learn coding and whatever, like the person in doing our history and economics and things like that, just like. Yeah, I'm a fellow CS plus X major um, with CS and econ. Um, and I did just choose those because both of them really interest me separately. And I'm also passionate about the intersection between them, just learning more about how markets work and then also developing apps and being able to know the business side of things. Um, and I'm also really interested in the ethics of the internet. I took a, a seminar course with that same title last quarter um, and learned a lot about ethical AI um, and all the sort of issues with intellectual property and online dating and just the whole host of new situations that arise with the internet. And I think taking some courses in the humanities, um, looking at history and looking at different dimensions of tech is really helpful. Um, I know some people just wanna be pure CS majors, which is great, but I 
I think there's definitely value to balancing that out with ethics and other things so that you become, if you go on to become a software engineer, you're thinking about um, making your app ethical and making it for an inclusive audience. Yeah, for sure. And I definitely agree with Isabella's point of um, when you're in college, kind of like taking um, humanities classes or just like um, other electives that are kind of like non-technical, because honestly, it's, uh, it's also just like refreshing to kind of like get that new perspective when you've just been doing like math or coding all the time. And uh, yeah, honestly, it's just like, um, yeah, just a new perspective that uh, kind of really uh, makes you understand like what exactly, if you do want to pursue software engineering, like what exactly you're building and like, is this like, is it heading in the right path type thing? So awesome, thanks so much guys. And then we have another follow-up question from Elliot. So he asked, if you didn't major in computer science, what would a good um, alternative major be? Well, I know um, Dartmouth has this thing called human-centered design that has a lot of um, classes on UX and UI and some of the non-technical pieces, but that are still critical in app development. So something like that could be cool or engineering or honestly, like I was saying earlier, anything. I think anything can be boosted. Um, by by coding in some way like I'm in computational game theory right now and it seems like every department here has some class that is preceded by computational there's computational linguistics um and so many other things so I'd explore anything you're genuinely interested in it in and I bet there will be some way to link it with coding if I had a new major, it would be like psychology because I think that the research methods and the way people thinking applies really nicely to UX design. But really, yeah, like Isabel said, follow your passion and you will find a way to make it computational, make it digital. Yeah, I did also want to mention, I I do know a lot of um, a lot of my friends of mine who do who are an active part of the CS community, but are also uh, math majors. So there might be some sort of like um, relationship there. Like if you do math, if you're a major, if you're doing, if you're majoring in math is apparently they also do um, a lot of CS, uh, but I know like, like Isabella and we said, and also like I, uh, like I said before, um, I think coding is just something anyone can do. And um, if I didn't enter UCLA as a CS major, I don't think that would have stopped me from kind of exploring uh, how to code and all the tools and all the skills you would need to be a good uh, programmer um, and a good software engineer. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's uh, when you major in computer science, it's basically not really, it's basically teaching you a way to think really well about computers. Um, and that is, while that is critical um, in like learning how to code, I don't think that's the entirety of coding. Um, there's a lot of different parts of it and um, like I said before I think as long as you're passionate about it I think anyone can code. No for sure I love that message just like don't let your major restrict you even if it's not CS kind of like take the initiative to uh, to learn how to code yeah awesome and then so we have two attendees that are kind of asking um, I'm having trouble coming up with ideas for a new app. So I was wondering what are some good ways to get inspiration for a new apps? For me, the best apps that I've created have been like trying to solve a legitimate issue. Like you can always create, like create a solution and then find a problem, but that's a pretty backwards way to do it. And Certainly you can see some startups who try to do that and they ultimately fail because they can't find a market for their application. Or really what you want to do is try to find a pain point, something out there, either that you personally know or like someone you know is like intimately related to it just because you want to have that product market fit. You want to be able to create an app that you mean understand the problem first and then create a solution that actually solves the problem and not just a symptom of the problem or something like that. But I think that's what the best apps are and that's what makes winning apps, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I definitely do agree with Reese. Um, I think 
um, I guess there's like two ways to think about this. Um, if you're just like building an app uh, for the fun of it, just to learn, I would say kind of just make it whatever you want to make it. It could be as wacky as possible. It could like be a game. I know Natalia has made like a French fry game before. Um, and um, I think if you're just trying to like learn how to code and learn how to build something, kind of do whatever you want to do. I think that's like, I think that's am- that's the amazing part about like, um, software engineering, you can kind of create whatever you want to create as long as you have like the right passion and the right idea for it. But if you are trying to think about something more serious, I think we've cov- pretty much covered like all the like critical points there, like something that you think uh, is a pain point in your life, something that you think you want to improve, um, find a way to like integrate that with um, an app or a website, anything that can be um, automated, I want to say is a great place to start. Uh, when you think about uh, how you want to, um, like when you want you want to start thinking about an app you want to make. Um, and oftentimes I've seen just interacting with your community and uh, your friends around you and kind of like seeing like asking them like, oh, like what's like, what's really like, you know, what, what, what do you think is really stopping you from being better, like enjoying life more, all that sort of stuff. I think that's where you really start that's where that's when the ideas really start brewing in your head when you start interacting with people around you and seeing uh, what's really stopping them or holding them back from uh, doing something so I think that's something you can definitely like um, that's a, that's an idea that you can jump on and potentially create into a cool app idea um, I love what you said Aditya about um, how like you can and should use CS um, to do anything that you want be it like a french fry game or an app to i don't know to recycle um properly um and just echoing what my fellow panelists said i think it's really important not to figure out a solution and then backtrack or to try to artificially create a problem um the most helpful and influential apps i've found begin by identifying the problem or seeking out a specific community and then figuring out what they might need help with and then crafting a solution to it um that you know people will actually want to use because you can code the best app ever with the best design um that's super cool and technically complex but sadly if people aren't interested in it there won't be a market for it and other people won't get to really see or experience the cool thing you made no, for sure. Plus one to Isabella, be sure to like ask if, if you're coding an app for like a specific community or for a specific people that are encountering that problem, be sure to ask them and kind of drill them on like their, their pain points so that you can like uh, ideate and um, translate that into like a technical solution. Yeah, so it's like, so I guess like don't, um, if you do want to create an app for people, kind of like don't get to, um, what do you call that? Don't get too like narrowly focused on just like the app itself and like its technical capabilities. Also be sure to ask people like if they would use it and like um, have them test it out too. Honestly, I think one of the most fulfilling things about developing apps is just like you get to see people interact with it and kind of uh, give their own input on it. And from there you can improve it. So that's kind of like one of the most valuable things that I've found when um, developing apps. Okay, awesome. And then we have um, another question from um, an attendee. So they asked, I'm having a hard time choosing which college to go to out of the ones I applied. What are some things you look at to differentiate between colleges? Yeah, I have a lot of opinions on the subject, but I think that you're mostly correct. Like most universities will teach the same classes, but I think that the rigor of the courses and the programs are vastly different. And also like the balance between theoretical and applied computer science. So some schools are renowned for the theoretical computer science, which is fun if that's what you want to do. And that kind of, but that kind of tees you up for a more academic career. Usually, obviously that's not very true all the time, but like if you are more interested in like software engineering, sometimes you want to go to a school that maybe leans more applied, but also like some classes will require you to take operating systems and algorithms and some maybe have an elective instead. So it really depends on how rigorous you want your education to be. If you want to have like a strong background or you want to spend most of your time doing computer science, but maybe you don't want to spend most of your time doing computer science and you want to have the option to do CS plus X. So that I think is where you want to look into 
how flexible this programs are, like where the computer science program is located in the university structure, like what school is it in, like what majors are related to it and things like that. I think we've covered pretty much everything I wanted to say. Um, in terms of, yeah, so he did mention about the balance between theoretical and the applied aspect of CS. I, like I mentioned before, UCLA is highly theoretical CS, um, which in, in a sense is useful for me. I do have like a really good understanding of um, how computers work, how does, how the microprocessor pro works, like all like the nitty gritty details about CS, but like at the same time, sometimes I, I find myself like, I, I ask myself like, is, do I really need to know all of this? Um, so it really does depend on how rigorous you want your uh, curriculum to be. Um, but like, I think, um, I think we're, we're at a point where no, most computer science students, uh, at least from my experience, uh, don't really define themselves as computer science majors per se. They usually define themselves in terms of uh, the project they work on, the club they're a part of, uh, and the impact they want to make with their technical skills. So I would, honestly, I would pay more attention to not just the CS curriculum, but also just the, uh, the CS community at whichever college you're going to, because um, you definitely want to be uh, a part of a college which has a thriving CS community with a lot of clubs ranging um, and dealing with a lot of different issues. So we're, so try to find a place which has a great beginner CS club to really, you know, get you, uh, get you started, but also have a good balance of uh, complex CS clubs to deal with um, very complex products and complex applications, because that really gives you a chance to really apply your skills. Um, and um, you also want to be a part of uh, a community where it's, um, it's, it's, it's a very, like, you want to be in a community which is super supportive, um, which is also super critical when you're a CS student or you're just someone who's developing uh, uh, an application because you want to be somewhere where people are willing to listen to you and hear about your ideas um, and really, you know, test out whatever you're developing. Um, so uh, yeah, I, that's that's really what I wanted to say. Um, definitely pay attention to the CS curriculum being taught at whatever whichever university you do choose to go to, but also equally pay attention to what what happens outside the curriculum because I think at the end of the day that's what's gonna end up defining your uh, CS experience or just your programming experience in general at whichever college you go to. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's really important to emphasize um, that what happens outside of the classroom is arguably equally important um, to what happens inside the classroom. I know when I was thinking about colleges, I knew I wanted to be a CS major. So I did give some thought to the mix between applied and theoretical. Um, and I did look into um, things like the Dolly Lab that I'm now a part of um, that would give me the chance to learn about CS in a less structured classroom way and more of an applied project-based um, way. But beyond computer science, even um, you're deciding somewhere you want to live for four years of your life. Um, and there's so many aspects of college that aren't academic, but are also very important. Um, it's a time for you to learn a lot about yourself as a person, your learning style, how you live on your own, um, how you make relationships, so many other things that are really important. Um, I know when I applied, I knew I wanted the quarter system, which I know UCLA has, not sure about UMBC, um, but yay, quarter system. Um, and I knew I wanted that versus the semester system just so that I'd get the opportunity to explore and take more classes. Like right now I'm taking an art history class um, and a religion course as well as my um, major courses. And I really like having that opportunity to explore and supplement um, my main course of study with other things. 
and I'm also excited to do things like study abroad, which I can do with the CS department. Um, so I think that sort of thing is definitely worth looking into as well. And just what Aditya said about having a supportive community, I feel like is really important. I know some schools have a very competitive um, CS department, but I know in my experience, um, the Dartmouth CS department has been very collaborative and there are a lot of group projects and group study sessions, which I really appreciate. There's that stereotype of the sole programmer working late, late hours of the night in a basement, in a windowless basement, um, let me specify, but um, CS can be a very collaborative social experience too. And I like that part of it. Yeah, same here, same here. Um, awesome, thanks so much, guys. Um, yeah, so if uh, any of the attendees have like any last questions that they wanna get in there, feel free to message. Um, so my next question is, uh, what advice would you give to high school students that are interested in app development and pursuing it in college? Uh, so kind of think about like, uh, I don't know, if you could do over college, what is one thing you wish you could like do again? Um, is there any like organizations or summer programs that you would recommend to these students? Um, yeah, so feel free to give your guidance. I would sort of reiterate my earlier point about taking classes outside of the CS major. Um, I think there are some skills that everyone should learn, like learning how to write and communicate is crucial in whatever career you may end up in, um, especially like CS because the truth is in a lot of startup environments or um, larger workplaces you really need to communicate what you're trying to do and not only write legible code but be able to discuss what you're doing to someone who may not have a technical background um, and I think you should really try to take courses on things like ethics of the internet um, or, or or related topics um, because those really make you a more inclusive and better developer ultimately, in my opinion. Um, and really, if we wanna change the, the narrative around computer science and make the field more diverse and inclusive um, and make resulting apps with greater social good, I think it's very important to, to not just learn about algorithms and everything, but also learn about how they can be improved and and made very welcome. Sure. Um, I might have I might have a slightly uh, controversial opinion uh, on this question, but I think one thing that I would have probably changed um, in my like three years here at UCLA is I probably would have cared less about. Uh, my GPA and my performance, my academic performance specifically. Um, so, so like at UCLA, DCS curriculum is like I mentioned, highly, highly theoretic and also very rigorous. Um, and that, and also paired with the fact that uh, we're also on the quarter system, that just means it's like, you know, assignments after assignments and, and more and more midterms is coming up again and again. Um, and I think when I first started off college, uh, I really, really, really stressed about all those aspects um, about the curriculum and just my academic performance in general. Uh, I think, and this is why I call it slightly con controversial because I probably would have told freshmen me, uh, it's, it, don't worry about it, it's, it's fine. Worry less about your classes and take that time uh, that you spend worrying about those classes and explore um, uh, your interests. Because like Isabella mentioned before, you're at college to like explore yourself and find out what you're truly really passionate about. I've, I've been able to do that at my time, in, um, at, my time at UCLA. Um, so I would really say, um, don't worry too much about classes. If you get like, if you get like a C, don't worry about it. I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends like really spread a lot when they get like, oh, I got a C in one of my classes. I would say, don't worry about it, it's fine. Um, really spend 
spend spend some time away from you know like grinding all the material uh learning like all all the things you need to learn for your classes spend that time you know exploring your interests you know finding new technologies new tools to learn um because at the end of the day when you do eventually and if you do choose to enter uh, a role in the software engineering industry they're usually not going to ask you about like oh how do how what do you do in your classes uh, how how do you do an assignment they'll take a quick glance to gta um but at the end of the day what they really want to know from you is um what project you worked on how you contributed them what did you learn how do you deal with issues um how did you collaborate with others um i think that's the integral part about college and um i would say really put a lot of emphasis uh, on that when you do eventually begin your college career because um you're not going to get those four years in college back so make the most use of it i am also not saying i am not endorsing to not care about your classes entirely definitely pay attention to your classes but i would also say give equal importance to everything else that you do Yeah, I think if I were to do it all over again, I certainly would explore more too, like both outside of computer science, like other hobbies, but also within computer science. Like I call myself a web, de web development specialist. And like, I think that is helpful in a lot of ways, but also like, I think it's hindered me a little bit, like on a very narrow focus. Like there's this idea in like the computer science and like economics research space called the explore exploit trade-off. So I definitely was exploiting my skills and my knowledge and my, my comfortable state when I could have been putting a lot more energy into exploring and finding new things, maybe not to like find new things I'm passionate about, but just to strengthen my skills in general. Like I think that it's good to be well-rounded in web development. I created Spike, but sometimes it's still as good to have general working understanding of other topics too. Like I think that it's limited me in the ways that I can interact with my peers or like find research opportunities on Canvas and other things like that. Like I think it limits my opportunities a little bit prematurely so I think definitely just exploring and of course it's okay like it's safer to be with your, what you're comfortable with but I think it's fine to step up out of your comfort zone like once or twice at least okay awesome and that wraps up our panel for today thank you so much for our panelists for such insightful um such uh, your insightful thoughts um let me share screen so I can share everybody one more time Okay, and of course our panels are here to help if you have any more um, questions uh, regarding uh, re regarding college, um, pursuing computer science projects, um, and overall just being like a software engineer. So feel free to um, feel free to contact them on here and we'll also be sure to send that out as well. And other than that, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, we have a lot more um, exciting uh, Congressional App Challenge Alumni Advisory Board events coming up. So feel free to stay tuned. Thank you so much and have a great night. Bye guys.